Joshua chapter 6, 1 through 5, and it reads, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went, in, none went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of rams, horns, before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man, straight before him. Imp impossible missions are a part of everyday life. Just, just, just making it uh, to the next day is an impossible mission for a lot of people. I remember when they told us that Jerice wouldn't walk. That's my daughter. She would have a cleft tongue and, and won't be able to talk. She would have many debilitating issues. And they told us that um, life would be miserable for us. We were faced with an impossible mission. Um, later on, uh, we bought a house to, to raise our three children. Uh, all of them perfectly fine. Uh, and then my wife's job promptly goes away. And my job freezes all pay increases for seven years. An impossible mission. We were faced with another impossible mission. What about you? I know that you face and will face impossible missions of your own. What, what can I give? What can I share from God's word uh, to help you not navigate, not circumvent, but complete your impossible mission, to conquer your impossible mission. All I have is one word, and that word is faith. So as we encounter our text, let us consider the thought, impossible missions, impossible missions. Uh, there was a there was a television show called Mission Impossible when I was growing up, and uh, I watched it all the time. And uh, the main characters in that show always won. You know, they always won. And even in the, the movies that we have today with Tom Cruise, his character always wins. And... Uh, can I tell you, spoiler alert, Joshua wins. But winning is not the focus. How does he complete this impossible mission? Well, it's like I said before, that one word, faith. Hebrews 11.30 says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been enriched for seven days. So right after, right, right off the bat, I can tell you that um, the impossible mission is made possible by faith. That's how he did it. And, it, and it's not wishful thinking. 
It's not uh, blind optimism. Joshua didn't, he didn't psych himself out to believe God is with him and it, and it all turned out all right. Um, no, in verse two of our text, God said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. And if you ever read this as uh, I will give Jericho into your hand, then you're reading it wrong. It's a future event, but it's, it's not said in future tense. God says it in past tense, past perfect tense for you English scholars out there. I have given. Even though it hasn't happened yet, it's at it, as if it's already done. And as you face your uh, cancers, toxic relationships, uh, unkind spouses, re rebellious children, and ministry stagnation, as you face these impossible missions, remember that your faith <clears throat> is in God and nothing is impossible for him. When God, when, when God leads you to uh, Jericho, he enables you to bring down the walls of Jericho, right? When he calls you, he equips you. He doesn't uh, bring you before obstacles to see you fail. He brings you there to show himself strong on your behalf. Now, let me say this right here, that um, there are people who take a portion of God's word and just run with it, right? So some read the, the sixth chapter of Joshua as saying, as long as I have faith in God, whatever I want in life, he will do it. That's not right. That is, that's not right. But it is faith that brings down the walls of Jericho, which is an impossible mission. It stood as an impregnable fortress. Let me, uh, let me tell you about faith, this faith. Real faith starts with uh, frustration. Not frustration toward God, not frustration toward other people, but frustration with yourself. You can't trust God if you trust you. You will not depend on God if you depend on you. Until your resources are depleted and, and fail, they will remain faith's greatest enemy. We turn to our resources before we even think about God. Our own abilities tell us that we can. Our bank accounts tell us that uh, we got it in control, that we can do it and we can handle it. It ain't nothing but a, it ain't nothing but a thing. Right. What do you do if what would you do if your your child came home with a runny nose, dry, cracked lips and green green toenails right would you take them to the hospital of course you would of course you would after you talk to them to find out where they've been um, who they um, what they've been eating and who they were with then call the friend that they were with and and question them about what they've been eating then call a specialist or two. And then after that, we're going to Google the symptoms, right? We're going to Google it. Why go all the way to the hospital when Google has all the answers? Then to the hospital because you have insurance that you pay for. And then when the results aren't to our liking, that's when we pray. 
then we pray. When we should have been praying uh, the whole time, right from the start. But that's what we do. Because we're so capable today. We're so, um, we have so many resources. We have uh, so much technology right at our fingertips and answers right there on our computers. All the answers are right there on the internet. There's nothing you can't find on the internet. But it destroys our prayer life and it keeps us from faith. Joshua, Joshua was given uh, the plan for Israel in regards to Jericho. And the plan was to walk. Verse three, you shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And just to clarify, that means once a day for six days. All right, they're just going to walk around. <clears throat> and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. Now, they're bearing these trumpets. They're not blowing them. They're just carrying them. So once a day for six days in silence, just walking. That's what God wants them to do. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. And the priest shall blow the trumpets. Why not once around? Why not one and done? God could have made the walls crumble even as the Israelites entered into Canaan where Jericho was. He could have made it so they watched it crumble as they walked up to Jericho with, uh, when they had Jericho in their sights. Uh, he could have had the whole city emptied out and the doors wide open for them just to occupy. But see, we know how they are, especially when things are going well. The same way we are when things are going well. We walk around in our abilities, we walk around in our knowledge and our resources, not faith. God let them walk around the city once a day for six days in silence to see that the impossible mission they faced was just that, impossible. Impossible for them to slay these giants, impossible to uh, capture Jericho. And yes, giants. Jericho was in Canaan, and Canaan was the land of giants. Remember when um, they sent out the uh, scouts, and the scouts came back. There's giants in the land, right? I was talking about Canaan. And so uh, 13 times in total around the massive walls of this uh, fortress to let it sink in that uh, it's not going to happen without God. 13 times around this impenetrable fortress for every hope of victory to die within them. God has been with them. God has been uh, keeping them and they have been victorious and they have been winning and they have been and now they've taken all of this, this attitude, all of this, you know, um, God is with us, who can be against us attitude to Jericho when it's not about them. So God had to let that die in them. What, he had to let it die, the thought of um, what we're going to do this victory that we're going to um, have, he had to let that die. 
Because it's only when we die to ourselves that we can begin to trust in God. Maybe you have stage five liver disease because you can handle stage one. When you get to the end of you, that's when God begins. As long as we rely on our own capabilities and and resources, as long as we say we can and we are good to go, then we, we never trust in God. When we realize that we can't, when we see that we are unable, that's when God says, all right, I'm here. Now watch me do amazing things through you. God was preparing them to be used. Faith begins with, with, with frustration with ourselves. Self dies and we can uh, then shift our focus from self to God. It's never about us and always about God. God's presence uh, is represented in the ark, in our text, which they had to bring around, right? Our text um, tells us that the central focus of this whole procession of about 600,000 able-bodied men, which is impressive, that's an impressive really impressive army which is why these giants decided to go into their fortress and just wait them out because they can't get in right but it's about um it's really about the ark not these men not israel the priests as you see in our text the priests were before the ark. The trumpets were before the ark. And the Bible tells us it is really the ark of the Lord that circled the city. That's what they were doing, carrying the ark around the city. So the focus is not Israel. The focus is God. As you face impossible missions, you've, you've got to shift your focus from yourself and place your trust in God. Focus on God. Whether it's your, whether it's your spouse, uh, a ministry, an addiction, an, an obsession, or your job, whatever it is. Impossible situations can only be taken down by God himself. We think faith is let go and let God and we do nothing it's easy just trust God and he will provide just believe he will do it and all things will be all right faith as far as I've read in the Bible prove me wrong if you want is is never sit back and chill out Faith is never passive. There are things for us to do. There, are th there is something required of us. You got to walk. You have to walk in your calling. You have to walk in your giftedness. Walk in your talent. Walk in in your blessing, walk in your favor. Walk, you have to walk. This is what God has for us to do. Walk according to his plan for your life. But even in walking, the success that comes with it is not based on us walking. It's based on God. 
And it's his infinite wisdom that God is going to work through our obedience. Faith will express itself with a certain following of God's plan. Faith will express itself with obedience. Faith without works is dead, right? Works don't build or produce faith. Works are a product of faith. We do works because of faith. We don't have faith because of works. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He gave his life so that we can have the free gift of salvation. There are no works you can do to obtain it. None you can do to purchase it and none you can do to earn salvation. There are no works you can do or need to do in order to keep it once you have accepted it. It's so that you can't say it's something you did. You can't say that uh, you put in the work to be saved or in heaven or in the presence of God. Being saved through faith says that, says that's unmistakably God that has made it so. As with impossible missions, the faith needed to accomplish impossible missions make your success unmistakably God. The walls of every Jericho you will face will come down. And as we see in our text, they had, it wasn't about the Israelites. They had no weapons, no strategy. They didn't uh, take siege on the fortress. They didn't dig any tunnels. There was, they had to do nothing fancy, nothing but walk. We have to walk. And when you do walk, those things that would stop you, God will bring them down because of your faith. And, and, and like the Israelites and Joshua at Jericho, once the walls come down, you're going to walk in. Everyone will walk in. It says, uh, In verse 5, it says, uh, straight, straight in, right? What does that mean? Well, the walls just came tumbling down. Uh, These walls are thick, really thick walls. That's why the people inside had no fear. They didn't respond. They just uh, ignored the Israelites. There was no way for them to get in. It was impregnable. The walls were so thick that even in in, uh, chapter 2 of Joshua, there was a a woman, um, Rahab, who her house was, her house was in the wall. And she was hiding people. You can't hide people in like a little hut or a little room. Her house was in the wall. That's how thick, how thick the walls was, how big it was, how impenetrable. So these walls just came down, and they're walking straight in. That means that they're not walking around any rubble. They're not climbing over what has fallen to get in. It's dust. They're walking straight in. And that's what God will do for you when you walk in accordance to his plan. Impossible missions are conquered with faith. God bless you and thank you. Hello, I'm the assistant pastor of the Word of God Christian Ministries. My name is Jerry Adams. I would like to take this time on behalf of Senior Pastor Gore to to thank you for tuning in. 
We ask that you keep our ministry in your prayers as we endeavor to do what the Lord says. Today's message was on faith. You know, faith is much more complicated than most realize. The Bible tells us that God has given each of us a measure of faith that coincides with the gift he has given us. This is so that we will be able to use sober judgment to assess how we can use our gifts as a member of the body of Christ. When we realize that God is speaking to us, it will definitely encourage our faith. But we are also encouraging our faith when we share what we have learned from him with others. So spending time with others, other believers, sharing what we have found and listening to their findings, that will also encourage our faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith comes from hearing the word of Christ. And faith speaks the language of the heart. It is an expression of hope that goes well beyond the conscious mind. Lives are made better with it. Peace is secured by it. And impossible missions are conquered because of it. Faith is a powerful tool in the hands of a Christian soldier. It takes experiences of many kinds to work the patience that builds faith. Start by reading, studying, and meditating on the, on the word of God. Praying and listening for God's answers, which he will show you in his word. Soon you too will conquer impossible missions by faith.